Hello again. One difficulty when discussing ethnicity, race and intelligence is that those debating these topics often refuse to acknowledge or indeed even look at evidence which tends to contradict their world view. It is for this reason that I buy any new books which champion the cause of anti-racism. Books like these, for example, uh, Rennie Edo Lodge, Adam Rutherford, and so on. After all, I'm often mistaken and ill-informed about all manner of things, and it is far from inconceivable that I shall learn something new from books like those, something which might overturn some cherished view of my own. This used to be known as having an open mind, but where this particular subject is concerned, that is not something which most people wish to maintain. In this book by Adam Rutherford, who is a geneticist of Indian heritage and a dedicated anti-racist, he gives a reference for the belief that the average IQ in sub-Saharan Africa is roughly 82, rather than the 100, which we find in this country. The source he gives for this is a meta-analysis of the literature on the subject carried out by academics at the University of Amsterdam. I give a link to a PDF copy of their paper in the description to this video. Now the point about this study is that it averages out the results of many papers published on the subject and summarises the research. The authors conclude, and I doubt that many scientists or statisticians would disagree with them, that analysing the research carried out indicates that the average measured IQ in sub-Saharan Africa is 82 rather than 100. Now it's certainly possible to discuss the significance of this figure and to consider whether it is something to do with social, economic and environmental factors or if genetics are somehow involved, but about the figure itself there can be no real debate. Those who conducted this study of the literature are not racist who are pushing some line or other. They simply examined all the tests and research and then reported on what has been found. It's a bit like a Cochrane study. Uh, they looked at loads and loads of research and then summarised it and averaged it out. It is also quite possible to say that IQ and intelligence are different things, of course, and that this 20-point gap in IQs does not relate to intelligence as such, but might be caused by cultural bias in the tests themselves. This, then, is one advantage of keeping an open mind on such subjects. By reading Rutherford's book and following his references, I came across this study, which is well worth looking at. I'm bound to say I've been slightly dubious about the claims made by people like Richard Lynn, who um, edits Mankind Quarterly, and I rather assumed that most of those studies about differing IQ between Africa and Europe were somehow not respectable or could not be relied upon. Looking at this paper in detail, though, shows that this is far from being the case. A good deal of testing has been conducted, and although the results do vary, the average still comes out at 82 for that part of Africa, as opposed to 100 in this country. We can argue about the cause of this discrepancy, but that it exists is pretty well accepted by most people in the field. Whether it has any significance for people of African ancestry, though, is definitely a debatable point, although there are some clues which I've talked about in other videos which I've made in the past.